Okay, and welcome to our SRS facelift and upgrade guide. These are the parts that we're going to use on this particular rifle. Uh, you can see we have the standard 20 inch out barrel, which we will be replacing. It comes with the normal inner barrels, but we're going to use the carbon out barrel there, the G spec out barrel, the extender because this is an A1, dual stage speed trigger, new open sear, and these are the hot parts that we will be using. Uh, it's the fast hop, 70 degree bucking and chub nub version 2. Now we've done the hop build before, previous video, so we put those to the side. I've taken the body panels off so we can access the trigger box and the sear at the back. So we're just going to remove the cylinder and handle. And then when we've got this all to the side, we've got a clear working area. First thing I'm going to do is uh, get the two stage trigger. This is the speed trigger and the open sear. So remove the safety catch first, and now we're going to remove the trigger box itself. These screws can be quite tough. Um, they've obviously been put on there for the manufacturer. You'll also notice that these are in grooves. This allows the trigger box to slide forwards and backwards, and this allows you to set the height of the sear so you can uh, customize it yourself for a harder or weaker break as it were. So we just move the transfer bar over there. Now we have access to the rear sear where we're going to replace it with this upgraded open sear. The open sear will basically make the pull a lot smoother and uh, whilst we've got it open might as well. So the first thing we do is take a 2mm allen key and remove the two screws holding the plate at the back. When you remove this plate, uh, just be aware that there is a small spring under there. And if you can do this on a flat surface with probably something that's non bounce, then if the spring goes, you've got something to keep it. There's a small bar that holds the sear in. And once this is removed, there's a spring. Then the sear comes out. Whilst this is open, I will give the spring a little clean. Might as well while it's there. It's not often you want to open the rifle to this extent. Um, now we're going to give the actual receiver a clean, just get some bits that build up into it like here, we can see there's uh, some debris that's got into that uh, open catch. And the cleaner your rifle is generally the better it works. Now we've given it a good clean, we'll start to install the new open sear. Just orientate yourself with which way it goes around. You can see me here just uh, checking it out just to make sure because the uh, last thing you want to do is put this in and get it all way around. So that's the original sear. Give you an idea of how it looked when it was in. Then you can translate that over to the new sear. As such. Now obviously just line up that bar to the sear itself. This can be slightly fiddly. Just take your time. You'll also notice that this is where we put the spring in. I found it's easiest to put the spring into the recess in the sear, then put the plate over the top Hold the sear up with your index finger and push the plate down with your thumb. Keeps the spring compressed and in place. Then once you've grown a second set of hands, you can then put the screws back in to hold the plate in place. Don't be surprised if you do drop screws and everything else when doing this. This is why I use a large mouse mat. So this is a Corsair mouse mat. And these are particularly handy as I do have a habit of dropping anything that I touch, which is lucky. Um, but once this is in, I'd also release that sear carefully because the spring will still try to make a run for it. Then just connecting the transfer bar. It is very common to have these 
stick down a little bit like that just because of the grease just bring it up there to make it proud and I'm just purely just just making sure it's all working as it should be check each step as you go it takes a couple of seconds and if there's a problem then you've got it localized to that area that's all working fine and I'm going to move on to the replacing the trigger next I actually really like the twin stage triggers I find that where you can adjust the slack that's taken up before the actual trigger disengages the sear, it means that you're kind of removing a lot of the vagueness of this comes within trigger. Um, this one works really well, and I just prefer on mine, so that's why I chose whilst I had it open to install it. Just looking now, best way to get the trigger in as you can see there is a spring that connects to the extent of the arm I found that if you you can try and put the, you know, I'm trying here to get the trigger in with the spring in already but it's a bit tight going in this way so put the trigger through at an angle get the spring into this recess in the trigger box itself then push down and again it's it can be fiddly but just take your time with it. Once you've got it in position, we can then put this uh, retaining bar back in, like so, and that's your trigger installed. Just make sure that's flush as well, because that's the trench where the safety guide slides. And also with the dual, spate, dual stage triggers, you can adjust the uh, all areas of the trigger itself which I'll show you soon you'll need a 1.5 mil allen key you can see there so this kind of adjusts the amount of movement the trigger has before it actually engages the, tr the full trigger as we call it when taking a shot Obviously, you could spend a lot of time doing this, but this is this this seems quite right for for me. So now we're just going to reinstall it. Uh, we connect the transfer bar to the rear sear first, and leave the transfer bar slightly proud of the channel, just so we can hook it into the trigger itself when we're replacing the trigger box. shown here when we're reinstalling the trigger box as I said before you've got those um, where the, the screws attach you can see that there's movement for the trigger box to slide forwards and backwards this is so you can position your trigger exactly how you need it so as you can see with the picture just popped up when the trigger is pulled you need that sear to be level with the opening and then when the trigger is not being touched the sear will rise this will obviously lock the piston back and stop any slam firing now we're going to move on to installing the outer barrel as I said before we've previously done a video on the fast stop installation it's such a simple thing to do really especially with the version 2 chub nub that does also aid in alignment so we'll just put the collar on first and then we'll slide the outer barrel over the top of that the divot there, which is part, aids the barrel locking, you'll see a schoolboy error that I make in that it's not facing downwards. So, as with all the new A2 barrels, these are connected via two two millimeter grub screws. And when you're putting the grub screws in, just make sure that they are flush with the outer barrel. If they're proud, then they will cause damage when you're trying to reinsert your outer barrel could possibly cause a locking issue as well. Actually, I'm checking to make sure they're flush. Now, I was originally going to try to put a small carbon outer barrel on the end of this, but it was just too short. So we're using a 509mm edgy dual bore barrel here. So we've now moved up to a, sorry, we tried to use an extra small to start. We're now using a small, so this is the next size up. These just screw straight onto the end of the G-Spec outer barrel. As this is an A1, 
SRS we've already put on the extension piece this is just so as the barrel goes past the hand lock threading which is not found on the A2 hence the extension for the A1 once we have this in place it's then a case of getting the barrel spaces in and this is again a little bit fiddly and here we have me getting them in what I tend to use is a barrel this is an inner barrel um, packaging tube these are perfect because once you've got that spacer just over the top of your inner barrel this goes over the barrel itself and will push the spacer down to where you need it to be for this size of carbon outer barrel so again this is the small it comes with two barrel spacers you can see this is the set this is the barrel spacer going in now Once that's in, with the carbon outer barrels, they actually double up as your suppressor as well. So Silverback have released these foam baffles and they will go into the outer barrel and you will see in a minute that you then have a carbon outer barrel and suppressor in one. There is no threading on the carbon outer barrel, so you couldn't screw a suppressor onto the end of these. But with the carbon outer barrel, you're taking a lot of the weight off the front of your rifle. So it kind of seems a little bit counterintuitive to then stick a dirty great suppressor on the end of it and take away all of that advantage. Yes, they look really cool, but why not make use of it as well? The new end caps, they're very tough to fit, as you can see. It's not going to just suddenly pop off. I know that some of the previous uh, carbon suppressors, they were a little bit easier to come off and some people lost them in game. These go on very well. I would suggest a very small dab of super glue, which I actually do later on. This is off camera. And it's enough that you can pull it off if you need to, but it will keep it in place so you don't lose it. Now we're going to put it back in and I'm going to see what an absolute clown that I am and not realizing that it's upside down. Just making sure that it's all lined up on the hop side of things anyway. What I tend to do when I put the place of the outer barrel, I will also insert the handle and cylinder. Now this particular rifle went for a full edgy upgrade. So we're going to put the edgy handle and cylinder in. And this sits down, this sits in place just to make sure that it's completely lined up. We're just eliminating any slight variance now you can see I'm going to try and tighten the barrel and can't get anywhere with it now again I will try again before I realize my mistake but I think the thing to take away from this is don't force anything that doesn't go straight away if I would sat there and tried to really force it I would have damaged something so take the outer barrel out there's your mistake time to change it so we now have to undo the locking screws with the inner barrel spacers these things hold it solidly and you're not going to turn it by hand as I found out so I had to do a quick disassemble put it all back together again I have skipped past this most interesting part I'm sure you're sorry to hear so this is me trying to turn it by hand not going to happen days of school day so we just cut back to when the barrel is now correctly assembled gonna get those two screws in again remember make sure they're flush you will have to tighten them a little bit a little bit more than you may feel comfortable with but as long as they're flush you're fine if they're gonna go start they start going in thing or damaging your hop unit so you kind of have to stop If you have bought an A2 outer barrel from Longbow and you do not have the 2mm screw, um, screws here, send us an email and we'll get a set out to you. So now we're going to get 
it's installed properly. We're going to engage the handle. We're going to make sure it locks first. Because you can lock it and it will still have motion in it before you tighten it up. So now we'll engage the handle. So that's exactly where it should be. And tighten up the screws. And as I've always said, do not over tighten these screws. They need to be just hand tight. I mean, you can wiggle the outer barrel and see, just make sure there's no excessive movement in there. If you do over tighten these, you will damage your receiver. It will basically put too much pressure on the receiver itself in the locking mechanism. And as I turn the receiver up here, you can see these points I'm about to point out, these are the points that will go. I've seen these that have actually gone and they still hold the ice barrel tight on the A1. On the A2, there's a lot of material that's been taken away to reduce weight. And these things aren't cheap. So again, you don't need to go over the top with it. Just check the uh, mechanism and it's all working perfectly. With regards to the handle, it's disengaging and re-engaging without any resistance. Now we're going to check the trigger and the sear, just make sure that it's exactly how it should be. That's fine. Again, check each step as you go. Just so you don't want to get all the way down the end of the line, realise you've missed something and have to go back again. Now we're going to install the edgy sat piston, spring, spring guide. And before we put these back in, the customer also wanted something different. So we done a uh, a very unique paint camo set on the panels. Listen to the customer's needs in regards to what they roughly wanted and did these and it kind of fitted the bill. We've left the rest of the rifle black because I believe the contrast works really well and most of the time these rifles, I mean this particular customer has a Sprint Custom Ghillie rifle wrap so that will cover up the black parts should you be concerned but it also just it sets it off a little bit as well and airsoft is about show. I'm going to put the mag catch back into the right handed panel here you can see this is the bar for the outer two pieces this just holds these two together just slots into there then because this is an A1 that also had a second retaining bar here this retaining bar the second one isn't in the A2 so we just get that seated there Next thing and is the spring and the mag release button. This can be a little bit of a pain. As you can see, it kind of has a little bit of resistance because obviously you're pushing down on quite a chunky spring on a tiny little button. But just persevere with it. Don't lose your rag with it. If you feel like you're getting angry, put it all down, go and have a cup of tea, come back to it. Uh, later today, even if it's next day, don't get wound up these things. So just try and make sure that's square, and don't also forget your if you don't have the rear monopod, the monopod plug itself. If you've lost yours, again, we do sell these as spares, so you can get one to put into your rifle if you manage to lose it. just going to dry fit the panels before we actually go ahead and screw them all together what I'm going to do is once you see the second panel go on again this is another this the panels actually take a lot longer than most of the other parts on the rifle especially when you painted them because you need to kind of treat them with a bit of respect I mean with the paint it will always start to wear on the high traffic areas things like the grip um, but the worn look again adds to the character of the rifle uh, we give these three coats of matte varnish they're given two coats of primer then the paint three coats of matte varnish left to thoroughly dry in between each coat 
but the paint by the nature of the game it will start to fade or not so much fade but it will start to um, wear on as I say the high traffic areas like the trigger and obviously if it's rubbing against your kit and everything else but once you get the panels on they will ha have a reassuring click as all the parts engage where they should now before I screw them up as that again I'm just checking to make sure that the panels do connect that there's no foreign object that's got in between them these are a nylon reinforced plastic panel so if you've got something in there that you didn't realize and you tighten it up it will deform the panel so it's just a quick check as you can see here I'm now realizing that I need to check the mechanism first just to make sure that the rifle will cock properly and uh, I'd like to do this before I go through the process of putting all the screws through the panels this particular rifle when we tested it through the chrono on a 0.48 we're using 150 gram weight in the edgy sat piston and on a 0.48 we were getting 2.28 joules which is a nice margin to leave because some sites have different chronos and they give some you know, varying results this gives you that margin so you see I'm now holding these together clamping it with my left hand cocking it firing it perfect again give it a couple of tries all working fine so now we can proceed to do the panels up properly again with the edgy sat piston it's the only the only weighted piston on the market with a threaded air brake so spring changes and things can be virtually removed and you can adjust your piston on the go to make sure that it's sight legal the longer the air brake the quieter the rifle will be with less FPS less joules shorter the air brake the opposite so now we're going to do up with the screws I am not going to go through that process because it takes forever and it's boring to watch but here's the finished article we've also removed the crossfire scope and replaced it with a vortex crossbow scope these are in stock and on sale and these are it's a fantastic bit of kit vortex warranty as well and I'm just going to compare this to my actual rifle and this is the only thing that I would have liked to have added to the customer's rifle would have been the A1 M-Lock handguard it is lighter it has got a certain aesthetic to it that I really like um, but this this build does just make the rifle a lot lighter on the front and uh, it's a fantastic build to use I've got to be honest thanks for watching